This is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. It's got all the big numbers. It can shoot 108 megapixel photos. The camera can zoom up to 100x and it records 8K video. There's no other phone that can do what the S20 Ultra does. But is this really the ultimate smartphone? Here's what I like and didn't like about Samsung's latest battery. The S20 Ultra has a huge 6.9 inch 120Hz screen. It's the biggest and smoothest screen Samsung has ever made. But the 120Hz feature isn't always available. For starters, we have to actually turn it on in settings. And it's only available when the display is set to Full HD resolution. When it's on, you can definitely see that scrolling is smoother. Here's a comparison in slow motion to show the difference. The downside is that it drains the battery faster. Normally, I'm okay with big phones, but the S20 Ultra is too big and heavy. It's uncomfortable to hold for a long time. Most of the weight is on the top of the phone. The side buttons are hard to reach if you're using one hand. Using this phone actually gave me a sore wrist. The camera is one of the most interesting parts of this phone. Night mode is a standout feature. Photos are bright and sharp, with accurate colors. Here's what it looks like compared to the iPhone 11's night mode. I prefer the S20 Ultra, which has more vivid colors and a more accurate white balance. And if you want a photo with even more detail, you can mount the phone on the tripod for a shot that takes 28 seconds to capture. The 100x zoom is one of this phone's biggest features, but it's not very good. Features at this level of zoom look smudged and lack detail. In fact, the quality degrades sharply at any zoom after 10x. After testing all the zoom ranges, I preferred 5x. It had the best balance of getting closer while retaining image quality. You might think shooting at 108 megapixels gives you a better picture, but it doesn't. All you get is a higher resolution photo that's good for cropping. You can crop a photo to zoom in and still have a sharp picture. But not everyone crops their pictures like I do. Most people just point, shoot, and share to social media. And 108 megapixels won't make a difference there. In fact, it's worse because those photos take up 5 times more space. Yes, the S20 Ultra can shoot 8K video, but only at 24 frames per second. It's much less smooth than 4K which shoots at 60 frames per second. It sounds like a nice feature, but don't forget, there are almost no 8K displays yet. So shooting in 8K involves a lot of negatives without many benefits. There are trade-offs with Samsung Super Steady Mode 2, but it's still worth it. You can't shoot in 4K, and the footage isn't very sharp. Despite that, I like super steady mode. You can easily get gimbal like video. It makes your footage look so much more professional. You can make your footage look even more cinematic with slow motion mode. I shot this video without a gimbal and it looks great. There's visible noise and less detail, so make sure you are shooting slow mode in daylight but the quality is still good enough for sharing. There's also a super slow-mo option, but it lowers the image quality a little too much for my liking.
Here's a fun new feature. Just press the shutter button. The camera app will automatically start taking both photos and videos. When it's done, you get a collection of regular still photos, filtered photos, and short video clips. Effects are automatically applied, like fast forwards or creating a loop. You even get panorama shots. The image quality might not be the best, but it's a really fun feature. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra has plenty of options, but maybe it has too many. Some of them work really well, like Night Mode and Super Steady. Others, like the 100x zoom or 108 megapixel photos, aren't that useful. There's a lot of trade offs here. For instance, I love the screen, but it makes the phone too big and uncomfortable to use. It's got great specs. And there are some good features, but this is a phone where the base model costs $1,400. If you are paying this much, there shouldn't be any trade-offs. There are plenty of other good Android phones out there. They might not have the big numbers of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, but you can easily find similar camera performance for a lot less money.